Hi, I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Classics Top 5 Reasons You Can't Blame, a series that takes a fresh look at sports personalities who are remembered largely for their mistakes, controversial moments, or questionable decisions. In 1988, an international incident occurred when the Edmonton Oilers shipped national treasure Wayne Gretzky across the border to Los Angeles. President Reagan instantly became a hockey fan, and the Canadian Parliament was in an uproar. Before we lay out our defense of the Oilers, let's revisit some of the fallout from the most significant trade in NHL history. The Edmonton Oilers have agreed to trade Wayne Gretzky to Los Angeles. To learn while the press conference is going on that they were breaking into national soap operas, and, you know, and TV it was indicative of how big a story it became. I was watching it, I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was, I was in mourning. It's the biggest trade in sports history. He wasn't a rookie. He wasn't over the hill. He was in his prime. He had set records that no one in any team sport had ever set. There's been nothing like him, or nothing like him before that, that there was that much of a buildup of what a player coming. It started when he was about uh, seven or eight years old, and uh, I think he's, he was playing in some league in Ontario uh, and scored over 300 goals. People would sell out rinks to see Wayne Gretzky when he was 11, 12 years old in Canada. He was featured on Hockey Night in Canada at 11. He had a, a one-hour telecast about him and only him at 13. He says, I'm just a person who's spent every moment every waking moment having people watch what I do. In 1979, when the NHL absorbed four WHA franchises, the Edmonton Oilers' Wayne Gretzky, at 18, began a spectacular journey into sports history. Cuts in front of his teammate, Gretzky scores! A hat-trick in the first period! From day one, he started to amaze us. You're on the bench looking at each other, just shaking their heads, wondering, you know, how did he pull that one off? His agility was far superior to uh, other players. His shot was um, probably one of the best shots in the league. His, his passing obviously was uncanny. Here's Wayne Gretzky behind the back pass to Curry. His 50th goal in 39 days! I played on the line with two other guys, and our assignment was to shut him down. We would get to the bench, and we would find ourselves arguing. Gretzky eludes DuPont. You had him. No, you had him. I handed him off to you. Score! I was playing on a great team. I was scoring a lot of goals. We were winning every night. The Oilers have won the Stanley Cup. We had the best team in the history of the NHL. It was like a highlight film every game. You're standing up watching things going on. This is unbelievable. After nine seasons in the NHL, the 27-year-old phenomenon had collected eight MVP awards and set season records of 215 points and 92 goals. His impact on the sport and his country was unprecedented. It was just beyond belief that uh, someday in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, which at the time was realistically a pimple on the prairie, that uh, the greatest hockey player in the world and the most entertaining team in the history of hockey would all happen here. Edmonton seemed like his hometown because that was their son in a sense, you know, where he, everybody in that city loved him. The city of Edmonton took Wayne Gretzky to, it, to its civic bosom. He gave that city an identity that it will probably retain forever. To Canadians, Wayne is much more than hockey. Uh, Wayne is an icon. He's a national symbol. Canadians are very proud of him as an ambassador. Uh, for the Maple Leaf to the entire world. Well, you just have to look at the front of the building. There's a statue out there of Wayne. He was probably more recognized than the prime ministers in this country. Wayne Gretzky, for the fourth time in five years, hoists it over his head. I always tell everybody that if we could have kept Wayne and that team together, we'd have won another four or five tro trophies for sure. Canada was feeling pretty good about itself. We're a small country, but we've got the Edmonton Oilers, and Wayne Gretzky is the greatest player in the world. And Edmonton, I think, will win the Stanley Cup five more years. And all of a sudden, Wayne Gretzky is going to leave the Edmonton Oilers to go and play hockey for the Los Angeles Kings. In return for Gretzky, the Oilers, who 
two and a half months earlier had won the Stanley Cup, received two players, three first-round draft picks, and $15 million. But to most of Canada, there could be no compensation for the loss of their hero. It was absolute emotional mayhem. Millions of people. In the United States as well, but all through Canada. Watch that press conference. I promised mess I wouldn't do this. <laughs> and inside, wept with him. It's my 22nd wedding anniversary today, and then a catastrophe like this. It's just unbelievable. I'm really shook up I could stand here and cry. He was an oiler, and he would always be an oiler. And he'd done so much for that team. The people would never have suspected that he would ever betray it. Here in Canada, they have to stop the parliament, and then they made a motion to, uh, to say, can we do something to keep Gretzky in Canada? Mr. Speaker, I just simply want to say that we're sad to see him leave Canada and go to uh, Los Angeles. There were protests everywhere. I'll tell you that, that if you were on the wrong side of that issue, you couldn't have been elected dog catcher. Are you guys going to keep going to Oilers games this no, season? No, never again. Never go to an Oilers game again. Oh, no, LA fan now, LA all the way. Peter Pocklington was public enemy number one, the owner of the Oilers, because he basically sold Wayne. He sold out Edmonton. First coffee, now Gretzky. This is for you, Gretzky. You're the best, buddy. I'm sure Peter had lots of sleepless nights, but he was vilified forever and ever and ever. And that will be on probably Peter's epitaph. I traded Wayne Gretzky. All hell broke loose in Edmonton. I had a few death threats. I had eggs thrown at the house. People have long memories, especially when you uh, trade their icon. People in Edmonton held the bitterness for years and years and years. In fact, Marc Messier wouldn't talk to the media for a couple of months after. He was so mad at the owners for trading him. How could he trade the, you know, obviously the greatest player to ever play the game out of Edmonton? It was hard. It was really hard for a lot of us for a long time. It cannot be forgotten. Something's got to be done. There's got to be justice somehow. Okay, you've seen the heartbreak and anger that resonated throughout Canada when their icon was sent to Los Angeles. Now we're going to give you the top five reasons you can't blame Edmonton for trading Gretzky. But first, we have a few that didn't make the short list. Here are the best of the rest. The power of love. The trade occurred August 9th, 1988, 24 days after Gretzky married Hollywood starlet Janet Jones. Uh, I think he's being steered by someone that's um, sort of dominant. That blonde Jezebel. That charlatan from L.A. I that so. Mickey Mouse two-bit actress. His poor wife Janet Jones was, uh, was cast in the... Uh, the role of some sort of Mata Hari dragging our, our boy off to Tinseltown because she wanted to make a go of her career. The place she wanted to be was Los Angeles, and I think that had some influence on Wayne. No small consideration was the frenzied celebration of their marriage. I don't know how it was at your wedding, but Gretz had to accept free beer from both the huge Canadian beer companies because they both so wanted to be represented at Gretz's wedding. So he had free beer from Molson and free beer from Labatt's, you know? And he had to go, he actually had to call a press conference to dispel rumors about how many sequins were on her dress and, and you know, how much the garter belt cost. I mean, it was crazy. Everybody has their hoopla quotient, and I think that would have exceeded mine. That was the royal wedding in Canada. It's as close to, as uh, Canada will ever get to doing something like marrying off Prince Charles. Another best of the rest. The NHL was ecstatic. The league's most popular star was now playing for a major franchise that was floundering. The trade was clearly a wise one, because anything that helped hockey to that extent had to be good also for the Oilers. Wayne Gretzky could do more for the game of hockey in Los Angeles than he could for the game of hockey in Canada. At that point in time, hockey really needed something major in the United States. Something had to happen to kickstart it. And as it turned out, Gretzky's appearance in Los Angeles really did that. Hockey was perceived as a cold weather northeastern sport. When Wayne Gretzky went to Los Angeles, the NHL was perceived more coast to coast, more national in the United States than it had ever been before. His 40 goals in his final season with the Oilers were well below his average of 68 for the previous eight years. 
of being a fan. I didn't know whether I wanted to uh, miss the excitement of seeing Wayne on the ice, but I also thought, he's got to start running out of gas one of these games. Here's a kid that weighed 170 pounds soaking wet. If you got into an arm wrestling competition, you could probably drag a couple of girls out of the stands that would beat him. After missing just eight games in his first eight NHL seasons, Gretzky did not play in 16 contests in his last year with Edmonton. When I was traded, the end of the year, I finished at 170 pounds. The day I got traded, I was 151 pounds. I had a lot of pressure on me, a lot of stress. There's nobody skinnier than Wayne Gretzky. Now, how is this guy going to last the year? At the time that he was uh, traded, uh, I don't think, you know, he had had some, uh, some injury problems. Had I been the owner of the hockey team and was afraid of him being injured, it would be a good business decision to get for him all that we can get. One reason down, four to go. Here is reason number four. We had such a collection of great players that the city wasn't big enough because they couldn't afford to keep that team. Yeah, if we had been in New York or Montreal or Toronto or L.A. or Chicago, that team would have stuck together for another six, seven years. I grew up in Canada um, with the exchange rate, with their tax situation. It's a very difficult thing. I couldn't blame Parkington. He had to do something. At one point, there were 39 different investors trying to run the team and, and trying to keep, uh, you know, keep salaries in line and they just could not compete with uh, the free spending teams. There was a couple of years left on Wayne's contract and I think he was concerned that Wayne would potentially leave or want to leave or become economically uh, not viable for them. The Oilers I think could have paid him more money but not as much money as the LA Kings. When you win that many championships the, the financial uh, burden on a team to, to pay them all gets to be difficult. I don't think I can blame the Oilers on this. It was a, probably for them a good business decision, something that I probably emotionally couldn't have done myself in that same position. Edmonton's a small place. He had to trade Paul Coffey. He wanted too much money before Gretzky. And then Gretzky left, and then Messier left, and then Curry left, and Grant Fuhrer left, all those, the great players because they couldn't afford it. It was the start of hockey becoming uh, like baseball and like football. Money became a very important part of hockey. Reaganomics. One of the latest sports heroes in this country is a modest young man from Ontario named Wayne Gretzky. The aggressive economic policies fostered by the Reagan White House emboldened King's owner Bruce McNall to offer the cash-strapped Oilers a deal they couldn't refuse. Today's world, it wouldn't happen. Um, the idea of selling a player is really uh, pretty much gone now. Bruce McNall is the one that was bringing everybody, and everybody wanted to see Wayne. It was. It was a circus. Would you have come to Los Angeles and played for the Kings had it not been for Bruce McNall? No, I probably would not have. He burst on the scene in the mid-80s, and it was thought, here's someone who loves hockey, and gonna, he's going to be the man who's going to make this league prosper, and the Gretzky purchase was the cornerstone of that. Bruce was king of Los Angeles. He was spending money. He was buying ancient coins. He was buying sports memorabilia for ridiculous prices. He was paying Wayne Gretzky all this money. Gretzky signed for $2.5 million annually over eight years. What few people knew was how the King's owner floated his impossible dream. Like I did most everything else, I borrowed it. <laughs> the chairman of the bank was a friend of mine, and I called him and I said, the chance I can get Wayne Gretzky. And when the time came, I called him up and I said, I need $15 million wired immediately to Peter Pockington at the Edmonton Oilers. I never even signed a document. Later on, I signed promissory notes and documents, but it was done that quickly. I was general manager of the Rangers. I could have got Gretzky. I had a deal done with Edmonton. I couldn't get the money from my ownership. Los Angeles was the center of the hockey universe. All these guys wanted to play with Wayne Gretzky and be overpaid by Bruce McNall. It was just uh, astonishing because at that point, Bruce McNall was in his heyday and we didn't know he was doing it with other people's money. McNall, who was already under siege by multiple lawsuits from creditors, sold the Kings in March of 1994. Eight months later, he paid the price of his overreaching. Former Los Angeles Kings owner Bruce McNall pleaded guilty Wednesday to charges of bank fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy. It was all kind of fool's gold. He was borrowing from one bank, 
to pay the other bank. Then he was borrowing more money from another bank to pay that bank. Chris McNall's fall from prominence to disgrace will be complete in eight weeks. McNall was sentenced yesterday on bank fraud charges. McNall served four and a half years of a six-year sentence defrauding creditors of $236 million. He bought the Kings, he brought Wayne Gretzky, and everything came crashing down eventually. Since I get blamed for most everything anyway, I might as well take the hit for this one. But I guess I, uh, I, guess I was uh, primarily to blame for Wayne leaving Edmonton. Have we begun to change your mind yet? If not, take a look at reason number two. Back, Anderson, right to the, the Oilers succeeded without Gretzky winning a fifth Stanley Cup in 1990 while continuing to play for a packed house in Edmonton. About two years before he actually came here, I had a long talk with Peter Pocklington. Here was an asset that could be moved with no loss of revenue in Edmonton. Hockey was so popular here and tickets were so hard to come by that, uh, you know, the building was still going to be full. One of the things that was subsequently proven by the 1990 Stanley Cup victory, they didn't just have the best player in the world, they had the best team in the world. We were surprised that we could dominate like we did through the playoffs without the great one. What took a little sting out of it, that the player that we got in return for Gretzky, in turn traded them away and, and ended up getting three key players for that 90 Stanley Cup team. The great part about that team was that it wasn't just Wayne Gretzky. Virtually all these guys are Hall of Famers, especially Messier, one of the all-time greats. You know, it validated Mark Messier and Harry Curry and, and Glenn Anderson and Kevin Lowe and all those other players who had been here all the time and didn't quite get the same publicity that Wayne did. We had something to prove. A lot of people wrote us off, but we still had a great team in that room, and I think we wanted to go out and prove a lot of people wrong that we could still win and, and be able to win another Stanley Cup. He'd outgrown the province, he'd outgrown the country. He had to go somewhere huge. I think that kind of tickled him, that he could come here, he could go out to a play, he could go to an amusement park with his kids and not be mobbed. Canadians are realistic. They understand that in some cases, if you're really going to get to the top, you've got to do it in a larger pond. He needed a bigger stage to, to go to, which is why his moves to Los Angeles and then eventually New York were so appropriate. Perhaps further impetus for Gretzky leaving was provided during a meeting with McNall that fateful summer of 1988. I said, you know, Wayne, there, there's some interest out there. I don't know if their teams are talking to or not at that time, but they are talking to us. I don't think he really believed that it was possible that Edmonton would entertain a trade for him. When he found out that Peter Pockington was genuinely shopping him around, he took it very personal and uh, ultimately said, you know, I'm going to take control of my own destiny. It was Wayne's decision to go to Los Angeles. Well, we actually went up there on August 9th of 88 to Edmonton for the big press conference to announce it. Pocklington and Glenn Sather said to me, I need to speak to Wayne alone for a minute. And they said to Wayne, if you don't want to make this deal, we'll forget about it right now. Wayne said, no, I'm, I'm an LA King now. This was my own gut feeling. It was my decision. Wayne could have killed the train had he wanted to. So the fact that he went to L.A. was something that was under his control. It was something that I felt would benefit myself and my family now. We need the Los Angeles Kings in the NHL, and hopefully I can go down there and inspire and give some enthusiasm and a, and a winning attitude that I don't think they've had in 20 years. Personally, I think he's kind of a traitor leaving the city after we've brought him up from nothing. Well, there you have it. The top five reasons you can't blame the Oilers for trading Wayne Gretzky. Maybe we changed your mind. Maybe we didn't. Either way, Kings fans are still waiting for their first Stanley Cup. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for joining us.